<laughs> you did it! You did it! Uh, Finally! Yeah! Oh man, that was awesome! That was so fun! <laughs> oh my god! That's uh, Carpon Sankara! Carpara! Wow. <laughs> that was crazy! Carpara! And Carpa! Yeah, so um, that's. Again, wow. it's, you're just doing like a dance with the fish, you yeah. know? And like I said, the, the best I was piece... starting to understand it towards the end. I was like, okay, I'm getting it. Like, Yeah. And, and, and again, you kind of forget about the fish yeah. and just concentrate on your curve and, and the, the feel of the tension. Mm -hmm. And then you can get it. Now, if you were going to land that fish yourself... Ooh, that would be hard. So what you would do is you would you would take you would eventually grab that line, you bring this arm back as far back as you can, and you're almost walking into the line. So you walk in and grab it. And then you're gonna take that line and put it into this hand and bring it and, and you do it. You do that a couple times. And you can, but you have to be mindful that you don't break the tip when you're yeah. doing that by pulling that one down. Yeah. So try again and see how it goes. <laughs> it's a different it, it's a different thrill than it's on so the line. I don't know. Because all the fish uh, I caught on the Tankara on the plat were just small little trout so I could kind of I know you're not supposed to go up, but it's almost like you just go up and maybe right there. Yeah, well, like you said, on a 6 or 8 inch, you know, even a 12 inch fish, it's, yeah. chances are you're not going to break the tip by going up on something small, but yeah. on something big. Totally different. Like, do you understand how powerful that rod gets when it bends I like that? I couldn't believe how much it was bending. Yeah, it's like a great big U. Is it? Carbon fiber or no, it's carbon. carbon. Yes, an IM12 carbon fiber. We were the first company to use an IM12, which is like the yeah, highest. Graphite doesn't like that. Yes, it's the highest grade carbon fiber that you can have in an intermediate modulus. So are all tin car rods carbon? Um, yeah, some of them are a more of a composite, but most of them are like an IM8. And then there's a few that are IM tens, and that, si that so it, so there's um, low modulus, intermediate modulus, and high modulus carbon fibers. Uh, high modulus carbon fiber is stuff like that NASA uses, right? Oh. Or like in um, just high end equipment. Very 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 expensive and very very light. Um, and, but, but it is strong too. Um, intermediate modulus carbon fiber is what most sporting equipment is made out of, like golf clubs and um, bicycles, carbon fiber bicycles. And they can be anywhere from an IM5 up to an IM12. Sorry, I was, li I was listening. Oh, uh, no. I got It's a different feel. Oh, yeah. Not quite. It's 
just slower. Oops. A little slower. I like fighting fish when being fully extended. Generally, I do. Why is that? I, you just have more. The bigger, bigger, more powerful curve, I think. So have you fished with your, uh, what, is, what is the, like, the wasp? Oh, the new little hotchie. Yeah. Um, I have up in a reservoir. I actually need to fish with it more. It's fast action. I feel like people might worry that it's too stiff it, or too fast action, but the thing about that rod is it's pretty strong for as small as it is. And it will flex. It's a 5-5 flex, meaning 50% of the rod, it'll bend halfway down. But it can handle bigger fish. Um, not big fish, but you, you're okay. You'd be okay on a 12 inch, a 12 inch maybe 16 inch, you know, trout. Um, but again, I, I wanted it faster action because if you're using it in tight places and you hook into something bigger, you can't. You've got to be able to put pressure on the fish. It'll break off. Um, so I actually need to do a little bit more. It's on. More fishing with the hot tea. I do. I do. Just, um, just because. You know, I don't. I don't know what the breaking point is on the rod yet. Yeah. Got very close. See. <laughs> yeah. But right now I only have the prototype, so I, I don't want to break it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my manufacturer. It's a very cool rod. The little Hachi. Yeah, it is. It's like I said. It, it's gonna be that backpackers yeah. little. Well, it'd be perfect for like. Back where I'm from, like there's a little creek right behind my house that is just filled with little bass and. Yeah, a little crappie. Yeah, and occasionally you'll find little cats on in there, and I've caught small cats on the fly too. And people are like, cats on the fly? No. But you be. It's like bass on the fly. It's fun, you know. Yeah. It's just... Well, I was surprised too. I didn't think those cats would take flies, but they'll eat just about anything. Yeah, anything, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's pretty fun. I usually like to at a pod and the cat is always the first one to get it. Yeah. That's like bluefin and GTs in the salt. A lot of times they'll be together and the, the uh, bluefins are always faster and they'll they'll take the fly. We call it the, faster the, than the GT? Yeah. They, they're just the GTs are more like they're they're more I don't know thoughtful you know about it um, they'll just they'll almost always beat out a bluefin um, they'll just go for it faster all right I am officially hooked now <laughs> I was not this weekend, I was like, ah, I don't know if I know what I'm doing. And I think that was the problem. And once you get on big fish, it's just bigger fish. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you're in Rocky Mountain or up the Pooter and you've got small fish, then you fish it a little differently. But, you know, I tell people, because they're like, oh, you can't land big fish on this yeah. You just need, not only do you need the right rod, you know, and a high quality one, but you need to understand rod that's, dynamics. Yeah, and that's it, it, it'll break, yeah. No, we make damn good products. Yeah. Come down in here. Yeah. 
that you were just fishing, the syringa. Um, a lot of people like that for bass. Oh, like we've got some stuff in here, so we're gonna we're gonna fish this area a little bit, and then we can hop over to this next little area. I think this would be a, this, great, a, this would be a great rod for reds. Yeah, yeah. Like we sell these for reds, and then the bigger one, the Kyogen, yeah. a lot for reds. So we ship them to. Texas, Alabama, Florida. So there's a bigger one. In there. there is. Yeah, is that the biggest? That's the biggest. Yeah. Kyogen. <laughs> that might be the one I would want for reds, actually. This would be good for... Well, the, the thing is, the other one is going to is a much faster action. It feels stiffer because it's a beefier thicker rod like girth wise um and so a lot a lot of people that fish from a kayak just because you're down low and the angle that you you know in order to land the fish they like this rod because it flexes more so it's going to be a little bit more forgiving if you really bend on it this one or the other one this one the other one this the tip section is very stiff um so you can't put pressure up uh -huh. at the tip you know it is when that rod is in a full flex you know, this rod is like this shape when it's flex yeah. right or the the sumenka that you had but the other rod is like that when it's in full flex uh, okay. so you just you just don't have as tight uh, it would be, yeah. But it's like for surf casting it's great uh -huh. for for walking you know the surf um, and casting um, threads. That yeah. It's like people who do it off a boat or who do it um, walk you know, waiting. They yeah. like that. Yeah, that would be better for me because I uh, I'm always taking my kayak down to the coast and just fishing out my kayak unless I've got a couple friends that have boats unless they're kind enough to make a trip down. Um, but I don't even really like to wade for them because they're just so damn spooky. Guys are so funny. Look at you. Look at that. Guys, you see me? Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. you would have gotten them really quick. Yeah. Um, yeah, all the carp fishing back home, they're pretty smart because they for a while they should be okay to send back the carp. Kill them. Yeah, that's, you know, the other day when I posted a carp picture, you know, somebody was like, kill it, kill it, and I'm like, kill it. You know, Boyd Lake over here is a great place on the kayak to do carpet fishing. Tons. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. That's right over here. It, well, I mean, it's just south a little bit. You is know, it, it's like, like 10 minutes. Like between Loveland and... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I thought about fishing there, but I thought it'd be pretty hard from the bank. Yeah, no, it's, like I said, for... A carp. I've done the suck board in there too. Yeah, they have paddle boards, but uh, I've done a lot of weird, or at the cabin we were staying at. And uh, uh, the guy there was such an asshole, he was just taking on me all weekend. <laughs> Well, let's. 
you, you definitely have to be, and that's where I fish, you know, I fish a rod and reel, you know, but I own a Tinkara company and I do both. And, but, you know, that's where I, I'm like, I have to be proficient both, you know what I mean? Because if not, you've got to be able to hold your own and it's kind of like the fly fishing resume, you know, it's, after I, Started landing permit and jeeps and golden dorado and stuff. Even on a rod and reel, people like just listen to you more. Yeah. You know, it's like. Yeah, I've never gotten a permit, but it's, uh... I've landed. I've landed a few not gotten like a giant one, you know, it's been turkey platter size, you know, but not like, I want that 30 pound. Oh yeah, I mean, even one that's the size of a dinner plate is crazy. That on Tenkara is really crazy. Oh, I love Jack. Yeah, I've landed some pretty big ones. They are so much fun. Oh, yeah. They will, they will drag you around. They're great fighting fish. They're aggressive. They hit hard. Oh, yeah. They're great. I, they, they, I don't know why people don't get, you know, give them more cred, but... So you've got a guy that just came and positioned himself around here. So he's right in front of me about 12 feet. Oh, you got it. I've never, well, I've never cast at one. Oh, man. I, I saw them everywhere, but I just... Ladyfish I have not done. I, I've, I've cast, but I've never had, like, a real clean shot. Um, and I've never, I've never actually landed a trigger. I've had some on. I've missed took sets. I've, um, yeah, and, um... And milk fish, have you ever? I've never heard of that. No. Milk fish, yeah, they're very sticky, very hard, they're big, they get massive, you know, 30, 40 pounds. I just think that they're so cool with those teeth. Yeah. They're funky looking fish. You got to cast the uh, parrot ones. A school. It was so funny. I came. That's so cool. I came across them, and it was so funny because I'm sitting there walking, and I was. I thought it was something in the water. Like I was like, "What is that?" It's just the the color was so crazy. Yeah. And I'm like walking, and I'm not even thinking about casting. Because it's like, I'm like, in my brain, I wasn't registering that it was fish. And then I got up a little, like, I got closer and I was like, oh, shit, what am I doing? Like, cast. Um, and I, I, I put it, like, right on top of them and moved it. And so that was, like, my one, my one shot. I should have, but I, it was stupid because I should have been casting a lot sooner, you know, but I'm like, what is that? What is that? And I'm walking in and then I land in the right on there. Right on its head. Their head. So There's a school. No. Bottom or? Okay. 
So on a tenkara rod, when you get stuck, you can't pull it the same way that you would on a regular fly rod where you're snapping the tip a lot because you'll you'll break the tip. So what you generally what I generally do, if it's across the way, I, I will usually I mean this is easy, you can walk to it, but just just to show you. I usually will collapse the rod to the point that I can grab the line. Okay. And then when I grab the line, and I can walk out there because I'm a leader so I can get it. I, I will, to. you know, like if you, if it was across the river and we couldn't get it, then then I'd pull from here. But you never want to pull like just from the rod because no. you'll jam the section or break the tip. Yeah, totally. So let's see. Let's get just that sucker off. But just, just like, that's a little, because people break tips all the time. I got it caught and I tried to, you know, yank it and it's like, yeah, I don't Yeah, that's the, I got caught a couple times this weekend and I, I did the same thing, just grabbed the line because it's like, I'm not messing around with this. Yeah. No way. I mean, there's a lot of crap over there. You know, there's a lot of branches, but I know there's fish because we keep messing around over there. Yeah. And you know, if your line is long, remember, you can always, like you don't have to have it fully um, extended, like here, like if you want to get a shorter cast, um, since you can't change the length of your line, you can change the length of your line. Yeah, you know, if you find it a little too long. There's usually carp along the far side, all, you know, pretty much down here. I'm, I don't know how shallow it gets, but that corner back there is definitely the, the carp happy spot. Oh, yeah. But they're usually all in here. No trout, though. Haven't seen any. I think that's all on. Really? Just, yeah, just, I don't know what it was. Just, 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 I didn't really get a good look at it, but I saw something swim along by that was not a carp. Hmm. I don't know what it was. I've been looking. Hoping. It's very relaxing though to cast it, isn't it? Oh yeah. They're so fun to cast. It's, uh, it's really nice, uh, especially because I usually wear chacos when I'm when I'm waiting, unless it's cold. Um, I need a bunch of one one good dumping of rain to just wash more of this crap out of here. And That's always my downfall is that I see her out of my creeping up on it in my kayak and then my lines caught on seven different things and <laughs> well you get really accurate because you're casting like the same length uh -huh. 
I mean, I'll change lengths, but like, like when I'm doing salt water and I have like a long setup, it's like, okay, if my, if my setup is 38 feet, like I, I know exactly, like you just, you're casting 38 feet over and over and over and over again. So you get really very accurate with it. I can't believe how shallow it is. I mean, you can see where it, normally all those roots are underwater. So we're like two or three feet below where we should be. I thought we'd get a hit in here. You want me to set up that big, big boy? We want to see what that one feels like. What's that? Well, there's still like, uh, I mean, so there, so you still haven't passed the soggy. Um, maybe I'll put you on that rod just quickly. We'll just switch the line over and you can cast that while I get the other one set up. Mm-hmm. 